Hey everyone, happy holidays. Hope you all are doing well. Um, we, have, we have a number of updates. Wanted to check in before, um, uh, before the holidays. Uh, so I will just dive in. Kyle, good to see you, long time no see. Um, so we're up to uh, 6,721 cases since the, uh, the pandemic began and uh, 142 fatalities. Um, I'm gonna go over a couple of things, but I think the, the meat of this presentation is um, from other folks on the, uh, the call here, other city staff. Um, we have been working very hard to uh, reach out to uh, seniors uh, and do check-ins. And this is something that we did uh, early on in the pandemic as well, and got a lot of support in particular uh, from uh, school nurses and also from the alders. Uh, and uh, in particular, I wanted to just point out Alder Sabin did a lot of work early on in the pandemic and Alder Evelyn Rodriguez um, has worked very hard to make a lot of phone calls um, this time around. There's a number of other alders that have been very proactive as well. Um, overall, uh, with the help of the alders, there's been uh, 1,304 calls made to seniors and um, 339 conversations with seniors to check in. And generally the feedback that we've gotten is that um, folks are doing okay uh, and really appreciate that someone's reaching out and um, interested, in, uh, interested in their well-being. And I think that um, one of the things just anecdotally that I've heard over and over again is people generally feeling pretty isolated nowadays. Um, and so even the fact that uh, our, our team is making those phone calls, I think is important uh, and very grateful uh, that uh, the alders are, are helping out with that. I'm gonna hand it over to Director Bond to give a overview of um, uh, what's going on with COVID, but in particular, I think there's gonna be some interest around uh, uh, vaccinations. Director Thank you, Bond. Mayor. So and in front of you. Dire so Director Bond, ideally you um, go through some of the slides and then maybe kind of repeat a couple of those things once the slides are off because we're doing a signed translation as well. Here. So this is just a disclaimer that this update is as of uh, December 21st, unless otherwise noted and subject to change. What we have in front of you is the COVID DPH um, framework that uh, the governor announces um, every single week or sometimes several times a week where he provides an overview of where we are in the state. As you know, uh, Connecticut is primarily in the red alert. Currently, the city of New Haven is averaging about 51.8 cases per 100,000 as of the week of November 29th and December 12th. Um, what we have also um, looked at and continue to assess are county indicators. And with the county indicators, um, it gives us a view of where we are in comparison with other counties, looking at the positivity, rate as well as looking at the hospitalization um, per day. And so um, as you can see in front of you, um, we are in the high category for both new cases per 100,000 um, and also hospitalizations um, as a secondary, um, secondary in indicator, including emergency room visits. And so uh, we are um, monitoring closely and um, making sure that as we look at where we are as a city, we are looking at um, those data metrics. One of the other things that we are continuously assessing and monitoring closely are the hospitalization cases. Right at now, as of December 22nd, what we see is 198 cases are in-house of patients um, with COVID, 52 COVID are in, um, patients in the ICU, and then overall occupancy of about 71% ICU occupancy um, is 185 of 218 beds, which is at 85% um, percent occupancy in the ventilator usage about a 49%. And those are de these are important indicators to really um, assess where we are locally. Um, this is um, the hospitalization for Greater New Haven, but these are some of the metrics that we are using for reopening and staying open as a city. Um, what's also um, going on in New Haven for us at the city is really looking at our vaccinations, um, mass vaccination for COVID-19. Our Moderna vaccine um, is going to be uh, hopefully delivered by tomorrow. 
And so we are anticipating a shipment as of tomorrow. And um, just quickly, I know uh, we talked about the Pfizer vaccine, Moderna vaccine um, during our last presser, but um, we are um, looking, um, these are the, um, the different two vaccines that have been approved, the storage capacity, the dosage that we anticipate, and the efficacy overall um, for both um, vaccines. Um, as you know, and I indicated in a previous press conference, um, the health department will be administering the Moderna vaccine, uh, which is going to be consisting of two doses, 28 days apart, with a um, efficacy of 94% in general. Um, we are also looking at the uh, a lot of questions around uh, the proposed timeline, and not only that, but the, the recommendations on how the phases are going to be rolled out. Uh, these are not definitive. Um, ASIP and the um, Department of Public Health will, um, ASIP provided recommendations. DPH, the Department of Public Health, will um, announce the official um, phase levels, but this is what we know as of today, um, the different phases that we are anticipating for delivery of vaccinations. And so we are in phase 1A, along with other health departments, about 19 other health departments that will be activating as of tomorrow, um, early Monday, where we anticipate to uh, vaccinate healthcare workers Residents of um, long-term care facilities will be vaccinated by the CVSs and Walgreens, and then we will also be vaccinating medical first responders. Um, and so, um, just to sort of summarize that um, for our interpreter, we are so, looking Director Bond. I realize that G Gage figured out how to pin uh, Alyssa to the screen, oh, so wonderful. I don't. I don't think that you need to uh, redo your message. Oh, could good. you just, could you clarify because you said tomorrow and early or next Monday? Yes. So, so with vaccinations, uh, it, we will the health department will start doing vaccinations next Monday, correct? So we will be vaccinating, getting our delivery tomorrow, and officially launching our first clinic on Monday, where will we be uh, vaccinating first responders and healthcare workers. Uh, we want to encourage healthcare providers um, in, um, to enroll into the VANS enrollment where employers are into, um, need to enroll and upload the rosters of your staff. And so what you see in front of you is the VANS enrollment where you can find that at the Department of Public Health. And the link is also in front of you. It's going to be very critical for our healthcare providers, dentists and other providers alike to make sure that you are registering uploading your rosters, and then you will be then getting an alert the, on the available clinics that you can then um, register um, to get vaccinated. Our vaccination clinics will be uploaded into the VAN system and visible once you get go through that process. Um, what's important as I wrap up um, is that, uh, that we will be indicating um, the process will consist of having the vac giving everyone a vaccination card but VAMS system will also provide reminder notices for second doses. Um, and so the and it's clear and it's very important for us to know that the protection from the vaccine is not immediate. The vaccine is a two-dose series, as I indicated. It will take about one to two weeks following the second dose to be considered fully vaccinated. Um, as with any other vaccine, it's not hundred percent effective. And given the current um, limited information on how well the vaccine works in general for the general population and how, how it may reduce disease, severity or transmission and how long the protection will last. And so um, we, we know that we wanna um, make sure that we, we are being consistent, that this is a vaccine that we will be providing, but we wanna be sure that people are aware to be vigilant on wearing a mask staying um, they're six feet apart from away from each other, avoiding crowds and social gatherings, washing your hands often and following the CDC travel guidance that are um, issued along with the state of Connecticut's travel guidance, um, as well as still adhering to any quarantine if um, any exposures for those that are not vaccinated um, and also any applicable guidance that comes from the workplace as well as any school guidance. And that concludes my update. Thanks, Director Bond. Uh, just to have a, a couple of other updates. Uh, Dr. Dalal, do you have anything to add? Checking out a little bit on this on our support for seniors front, just so folks are aware. Um, 
we have been, as we have throughout the pandemic, uh, been working with some seniors who are in need of, of, of food resources. You know, we typically deliver about 825 prepared meals per week uh, to over 100 seniors who are who have signed up with us and are, are in need of those services. Uh, in addition to that, um, we have a mobile pantry program that delivers uh, over 500 meals every uh, 500 grocery deliveries, uh, two weeks worth of groceries every other week. Um, and, you know, I want to thank not just our elderly services department who's been working hard doing this, but also partners that have worked with us throughout the pandemic to, to meet, meet the food needs. Um, it, we, these include Vertical Church and inter, interfaith volunteers and caregivers and other volunteers. Um, with respect to food, I do want to point out that we have updated our Food Hub uh, webpage, uh, which I think flashed on the screen earlier. So I don't know if Director Bond, you still, still have it up and you want to you share it or if you can give the screen share to me. Uh, either way. You have screen share capability now. Thank you. Yeah, so I just want to point out that uh, our, our COVID hub web page links to a food resources page and uh, we've updated with the specific food resources available over the holiday period, you know, historically even in, you know, in usual years, there's a little bit of a downturn in terms of the the the, um, the, uh, the, the pantries and the meals deliveries, but we want to consolidate the resources that are available for the community on this web page. So uh, uh, please point folks to this web page uh, for food resources. That's my update. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Dalal. Um, and then uh, finally, Mike Piscatelli. It would be great if you gave a little bit of a summary of Eat New Haven. Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see uh, all of you and happy holidays. Uh, really wanted to thank in part on the behalf of our Together New Haven partnership, just all of the support that's been shown to our local businesses right through the holiday season. Uh, you'll recall the launch of the Shop Small programs and the Passport, which wrapped up quite successfully over the weekend. Really appreciate all of that support. Um, there's still time for those interested in identifying a restaurant for holiday dinners. Uh, our family chose Zinc, and it is a very tough choice this year. There's lots of great restaurants offering great deals, um, just some of your very favorite food for the um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then right through the holiday season. Um, so keep an eye out for those. And then the planning going forward, um, you know, you're following the trend and the high positivity rate still. Winter coming in, which is compromising um, outdoor dining for sure and planning for three or four really difficult months in a sector that's very important to New Haven. So uh, by way of reminder, arts, entertainment, tourism, the hospitality sector is responsible for 35,000 jobs in our region. That's 16% of overall job space. And you know, beyond the numbers, I think we can all agree this is, this is what makes New Haven, the greater New Haven area very special. Um, these are our treasures, the places we love. And it's very important that we support them through a really very difficult um, winter season, if you will. So I've got a couple of slides to share. This is about our new Eat New Haven campaign. This is the follow on to the Passport and some of the other programs. Again, all related to celebrating and raising the visibility of our restaurant sector. Um, you'll see the graphics here really focus in on takeout and delivery and providing an opportunity for you to see you know, that what you, you may have a, a good memory of your in-dining experience, it is very much the same when you take it out and you bring it home. And many of our restaurants have pivoted quite successfully and with some creativity to what you are walking home with. So like if you go to Brasi's, you can get the limoncello and you can take that home with you. Um, many of the restaurants have given you that experience, if you will. We visited a couple earlier today. You'll see those on the news as well. And they talk extensively about what a great take home or delivery option is available to you. So you'll see these posters um, all with the tagline that says, let us cook for you. Just again, a reminder and a call to action to take advantage and, uh, and see some of our great restaurants and then take that food home to your family. We will do these in English, Spanish, and then on the digital platform, we'll have them in a number of other languages, including Arabic and Chinese. And then a key part of the overall program is the digital interface and digital connections. So we've run one webinar already and we'll be rolling them out right through the winter. Um, we've uh, got a staff of folks that are ready to go to help businesses with their online platform. Over a hundred now have one click access through the web portal. So let's say uh, you haven't yet chosen a, uh, 
gift card, you got one last gift to get for somebody. Um, you go to the website and then you can kind of scroll around, you see what's here. And then any one of these buttons will give you one click access to their gift card. This is a great way to support a downtown business, a business in one of our neighborhoods, particularly if you're a remote worker or maybe you're a Yale student, you're back home with your family, you wanna give gifts to some of your friends and colleagues. This is a great way to do that get cash into the hands of our great businesses, and at the same time have something to spend on when you're back downtown and back into the community. We're gonna follow this on with some technical assistance as well. Tomorrow, the chamber will announce a webinar to uh, start planning for the next round of the PPP assistance. You recall there was a big push last time around that delivered about $250 million in PPP and um, the economic injury grants to New Haven businesses. Again, a real push to get that out into the neighborhoods, all of our great neighborhood commercial districts, and our staff will be available to assist any business that is in need of help filling out, you know, sometimes what can be a fairly cumbersome form on the federal grant programs. Thanks, Mike. Yep, thank uh, you. The one final thing I just wanted to add is, um, you know, we're in the holiday season now, and I wanted to remind people in the strongest possible way not to gather with people that are not outside their core group. Um, we saw a big bump uh, after Thanksgiving uh, in cases, and um, I hope to not see that again uh, after uh, the next uh, week or so of holidays. We'll have our inspection team out in New Haven to make sure that um, there are not uh, uh, any establishments that are um, violating the COVID rules. But um, the main way that we're going to get a, a, a handle on cases is people deciding themselves and taking actions themselves to avoid um, exposing themselves to other folks. So please, please, please be careful and, um, and take these rules uh, seriously. Are there any questions from folks? Go ahead, Tom. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, a few for Director Bond about vaccines. Um, how many Moderna vaccine doses do you expect to receive tomorrow and where will the Monday vaccinations take place? So we are um, anticipating to receive a thousand vaccine tomorrow and we will um, be having our first clinic right at the health department um, clinic site 54 Meadow Street. And how many days a week will the clinic be open? And what, what so time? Our, our schedule will, will vary. We have several dates um, already um, scheduled for that um, period. So for the, you know, for the next few days, um, starting on Monday, we have a schedule for that week. We will also have other sites, testing, I mean, testing sites, sorry vaccination clinics um, at the police and fire station. So it will vary depending on um, the day. But we do have an, an, a schedule that will be within the van system um, that we will be working through. And could you speak a bit more to what's what your team is going to be doing between tomorrow and Monday? So after you get the vaccines and before you set up the clinic, what kind of prep work do you need to do? What education, what, what's, what's gonna be happening? Yeah, absolutely. That's actually a good question. So we've been doing a number of things. We developed fact sheets and um, posters that are being distributed, not only to our first responders, but also to the general public. Um, so we are final, we have finalized those and getting them ready for print. We are um, making sure that our nurses are well trained on utilizing the new technology because we are all going to be on utilizing tablets and doing everything through a, a digital system um, that um, is new to us, which is the VAM system that we are um, going to be using. Um, so we are continuing um, that um, education with the nurses. So tomorrow, our dedication is going to be on receiving the vaccine, inventorying the vaccine, making sure that everything is in order, and then also uh, finalizing any logistical things that we need to prepare for the, um, the nurses and staff for our first clinic on Monday. Um, we are um, definitely um, also making sure that our first responders are fully um, educated. So we are doing a webinar today at two o'clock 
um, as well as one tomorrow where we will be having an overview of um, the vaccine as well as the um, and the Q&A opportunity so that they can ask questions and that will be in partnership with our clinic director and our medical director as well. And so we will be doing that later, actually at two o'clock right after this press conference. And I know you've already been through this, but if you could repeat one more time, who is eligible to be vaccinated by the city's health department? So uh, we will be targeting healthcare providers um, and first medical responders within phase 1A. Um, phase 1B will transition through that process, but we will continue with healthcare workers, critical workforce, um, and which will be uh, more clearly defined by the Department of Public Health and individuals over 75 year old. Um, so we will be then prioritizing um, pending the approval on um, additional groups. And so as each phase, um, as we proceed through each phase, we will be providing support and reordering vaccines so that we can be able to uh, meet the, the needs of the community. And I've got a few more, but I'm happy to defer for a bit. Others have questions before we go back to Tom. Go ahead, Kyle. Um, I have two questions. Uh, Director Bond, how, with a thousand vaccine, vaccines available, um, is that enough for the current first responders you have on staff? And if not, how are you prioritizing who gets it first? Yeah, so we have sufficient vaccines. So this is going to be sort of like our first initial supply. Um, and then once we uh, start getting our reduction of supply, we will be able to replenish relatively quickly. Um, we wanted to uh, make sure that we had enough to get us started. So within a 14 day work period, we will do an assessment and then be able to reorder. So um, we're very fortunate that we have enough a sufficient supply as of now. Um, and uh, of course, not everyone is getting vaccinated. So we did conduct a survey of who's going to, um, to be um, to be vaccinated within the different with this, within this time period, and so we we definitely have enough supply at this juncture. Just just to be clear, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Director Bond. So the, the thousand vaccines is not just for city staff, um, it's, also for health provider. The health department will, will be vaccinating other health providers should they choose to get vaccinated through our health department. Correct. So um, this, the thousand doses that we're that we're receiving tomorrow, will be for healthcare workers and our medical first responders that are choosing to um, get registered through our clinic. Um, so there's a van system where they will see us activate. Um, we're in the system once they enroll, they'll see that our clinic is activated and and will will know. Um, which healthcare providers are registered and which medical responders are scheduled for that day. And, and as far as city staff um, in that 1A category, um, our fire department, everyone on our fire department is an EMT and is, a, is considered a medical first responder. Correct. So they, they would be in that category. Uh, nurses would be in that category. Is there anyone else, Director Bond? Uh, not at this time. And then other critical workforce will be under phase 1B. Okay, so um, as you said, it's the the health, um, the medical first responders, and that includes the entire fire department. Yes, they're all EMT and um, certified, so they will, they're eligible. Except, okay. except for example, for administrative staff at the, in the fire department, and so that the the number of city employees that are in that category is much less than one thousand individuals. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, so the second question is um, regarding the Eat New Haven. Um, do you know, will all of the restaurants be able to do delivery or are you guys partnering with like, um, you know, an Uber Eats or, or a DoorDash or something of that sort? Or is it just sort of, they decide to deliver as they are able to? So our role will be primarily raising visibility, awareness of who's doing delivery and what your takeout options are. Um, certainly the cost of delivery has become quite an issue. You're reading about that in the news. What we did was we put all of the different delivery services up on the website, which will give our customers an opportunity to shop around, look for the best deal, try to identify the one that's the best value for the restaurant, just so that the profit margin for the restaurant remains high. Okay, and then you mentioned um, tomorrow you there will be the chamber is going to help with the information on the new round of PPP. 
Correct. So the, uh, you'll see an email from the chamber releasing some information about just uh, you know coaching everyone up about how to get ready for this next round. And uh, does that webinar also include the governor's announcement for his $35 million? I think the chamber is still working on the agenda, but it's likely that will come up as well. Another great program that the state has released, just trying to target those mid-sized businesses, right? Okay. I think that's it for me. Thanks, Kyle. Brian. Thank you. So the 1,000 uh, vaccine order, is that enough to stay on track with, uh, at the last press it was discussed, there was a goal to do 100 per day. Does the city believe that it can uh, do that? As soon as we, uh, the vaccine initial order, 1,000 vaccines was just to get us started. Once we start um, doing an inventory um, assessment, we will be able to reorder vaccines. And so we have sufficient. <laughs> Uh, Did you guys hear yeah. that? <laughs> Just my I'm so sorry about that. My dog is thinking he's a guard dog. Um, so we have sufficient supply um, as we transition through to be able to reorder um, for our vaccines. Uh, right. Um, but uh, is, is it believed that the department can keep up with the target of 100 per day, as was uh, discussed last time? Um, the 100 per day was what our capacity is. And so we needed to do a, a assessment of what we can accomplish per day, um, but we will do it by appointment. Um, we know that each vial um, uh, is precious. And so we will be utilizing the appointment metrics. So we have the capacity to uh, administer 100 vaccines a day, but we will be doing them by the appointment. So uh, we can make sure that we are um, closely watching our vaccine supply and making sure we have the enough sufficient individuals registered. Thank you. Um, at the last presser, it was said to stay tuned for information on schools reopening. Um, is there any information on that? Uh, I don't think we have any updates there, no. Um, and I also have a question for the mayor also on schools. Um, I don't know if you have any reaction to um, the, it was reported that uh, about one third of the students are chronically absent. Um, I don't know if you have thoughts as the mayor of the city on uh, you know, what's being done, the efforts that are being done and what more needs to be done. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think the most important thing is um, to work to get schools back in session safely. Um, and uh, I know that um, New Haven Public Schools uh, is working very hard, including going door to door and some of the press has already reported on that to reach out to uh, students to get them more engaged. Um, uh, it, my uh, understanding is that there, it, well, so there, there is no, uh, nothing preventing families from having internet or device access other than um, if uh, families for some reason at this point don't know that they can get free internet or a device. Um, but, uh, f you know, every, every family is going through very different challenges and uh, um, it's, it's, I think this this year, and we've talked about this before, um, we've lost a lot of ground on education and um, the, the most important thing is that we get schools back in session. That'll do it for me. Thanks, Brian. Looks like we're going back to you, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, last time I asked for a copy of the city's mass vaccination plan, which you submit to the state, and I later heard that it was still draft, not yet approved by the state. Since we're getting the vaccines, is that now finalized? And can we see a copy? So we can certainly share a copy. I haven't received an official uh, green light from the state. Obviously, they uh, are, have approved us to be able to um, launch under 1A. So I can certainly um, share that. Um, and I'll just keep the draft on there just until I officially hear it's been approved. Thank you. Um, and Mayor, what's the latest with the English Drive in East Rock. Does the city plan on reopening English Drive? Currently it's closed to car traffic. And could you speak a bit about what, what's the latest and why you are doing what you're doing? Yeah, let me let me pull up a map because it's um I don't want people to get the wrong impression of what we are doing, what we are changing and what we are not changing. Hang on just a sec. Okay, 
Do you guys see the map? Yeah, okay. So currently um, the road is closed. Can you see my arrow too? See that? The road is closed here, 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 and then up top here. Um, everything will remain closed except for Orange Street and English Drive to Cedar Hill. So the road will remain closed here and then nothing will change up in this section. So there will be a way for Cedar Hill residents to exit Cedar Hill through English Drive and out Orange Street. Um, I have received uh, an, over the past, I guess it's um, eight, nine months now, uh, an incredible number of positive comments about the road closures in East Rock Park from people all around the city. Um, honestly, you know, as mayor, I receive a lot of communications. This has been one of the most um, frequent uh, types of uh, um, positive comments I get about anything that we're, do we're doing. Uh, the, and I think that um, the consistent comments is that uh, uh, people have, um, there's been a lot of, uh, uh, you know, very sad things about the pandemic. And this is a, a, a an attribute of um, a, what's changed that has been enjoyable for a lot of people uh, to walk in um, uh, in a way that's safe. Uh, I've also received some uh, concerns, particularly from residents in Cedar Hill. Uh, and the primary focus on that has been on um, the fact that there's only one road that uh, exits Cedar Hill. So uh, Rock Street is in, uh, May Street is in, and Warren Place is in. Gray Street is the only exit. And so previously you could exit out Gray Street or you could go out English Drive. And um, with the closure of English Drive, uh, residents were concerned that they would not be able to, they were not able to get out of the neighborhood if for some reason Gray Street, that one way was uh, closed. Say a fire, fire engine came in to uh, block the street as an example. Um, there have also been some concerns about police response time potentially being impacted by the closure of English Drive as well. Uh, those concerns have been expressed by the residents, not by the police department. Um, but in response to those concerns uh, and you know, in collaboration with the alders, uh, we worked on a compromise that would allow uh, the many residents from around the city to continue to enjoy walking on a large uh, part of the roads that were closed, but also allow um, uh, Cedar Hill a pathway, a second pathway out of the neighborhood by car. We anticipate uh, implementing that change in very early January and evaluating over several months to see if um, we need to make any uh, other changes. We'll also be looking at um, the potential of changing uh, the, um, uh, the the direction of the roads in this area to identify an additional way out, um, because that's been a consistent concern that's come up from the residents. Thank you very much um, yep. for that. Yeah, and I don't know if, if off the top of your head, do you know, are there any other streets around the city that have been closed during the pandemic? So there's Farnham Drive, I believe James Street by Criscola Park is also closed. Are there any others? Uh, no, so we, we have responded to requests from residents and um, there really haven't been a lot of other requests for residents. I think that we're, you know, I'm very, very open to the idea of closing other roads if, if residents that live in those areas want that and uh, in collaboration with the alders. Um, uh, and the same goes for businesses. A couple of examples of roads that we have closed down uh, for businesses are, are uh, of course on Orange Street and also um, on uh, uh, Temple Street, Mike, is it? One lane of college. College, lane, thank correct. you. College Street, um, one lane of college. Uh, so uh, I think we're very open as long as there's a collaboration with the alders and residents on that.
Um, and also there's a the small section of River Street that's uh, been closed, but um, that's mostly because of the structure that's there and some concerns about uh, public safety. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions from folks? Hey, Mayor, this is Dave from The Current. I had a few if I could. Hey, Dave. Um, actually, I've been thinking about Limoncello after the uh, discussion earlier, but uh, <laughs> uh, a couple from Maritz around the vaccine. Um, have you gotten anything from DPH recently indicating that they may not be able to fulfill orders going forward because, or, or not fill them because there is a supply of vaccine? I have not received any notification relating any delay with vaccinations. So my understanding, you have to order for every Wednesday, right? So you already have yours coming in tomorrow and then you have to order again next week if you want more. Correct. We'll be ordering weekly um, depending on um, the what we have left. And so we'll be reporting out um, and, and you know doing an inventory daily on our vaccine supply. Um, you said you did a survey. Do you have a sense of what percentage of people you expect to take the vaccine? I think in general, um, we were we we had high percentages of first responders that are um, willing to uh, get vaccinated within the first phase, and so we were pleased to see that. Um, that was something that was led from our police and fire chief. Um, that wasn't led from our office. Uh, we did a general survey just from critical workforce, just to get a sense um, to ensure that we had. Uh, we can meet the capacity and be able to plan accordingly with our nursing staff. And my understanding, have you heard of, had anybody had problems using VAMS? Like my understanding is like everyone has to go in and <clears throat> put in all the people that are gonna be vaccinated, correct? So um, with the first, mm -hmm. so I think I, with the- Go ahead, I'm sorry. I'll let you finish the question. No, I, I've heard some local, not necessarily, obviously, the city, but local um, departments and maybe ambulance companies. I know there are private ambulance companies in New Haven. I've had issues with, um, you know, accessing the system or figuring it out. And I'm just curious, um, you know, what you what uh, what your experience has been so far with VAMS, and what are you seeing as far as people using it? Yeah, so you know, we traditionally have been using CT Wiz, which is a different system. VAMS is a new system, and with any new system, you got to get adjusted to being able to navigate through that process. Our process has been very positive. In fact, um, the Department of Public Health offers daily um, calls and technical support, and so we've had the necessary technical support when questions arise. I think for me, what's going to be very critical is making sure that healthcare providers understand um, that when they're eligible, they, they need to register on their VM so, and upload their roster. I think um, we needed to just increase the messaging around that. So local dentists and other healthcare providers that have direct care with patients, pediatricians and those alike, really understand that they need to register. And so that's why today was very critical in promoting that link um, because we wanna make sure that um, our healthcare providers have access to the vaccines as they are our frontline workers. Because you have to be you have to be in VAMS to get vaccinated, correct? I mean, they, they have to be in the system and well, you know, get. It depends. Um, for for us at the local health department and our clinics are associated with the VAM system. Um, however, uh, we do know that um, Yale New Haven Yale New Haven Hospital and our local community health center um, Cornell Hill Health Center are using the Epic system currently, which is a different system. And so, um, you know, not everyone is using the VAM system across the systems. So um, for us um, and for our local healthcare providers, it will be critical to get into the VAM system. Many have been enrolling into the system, um, but we just wanna make sure I know from our side that healthcare providers um, can, as employers, register themselves and then upload their employees roster so that we can be able to plan accordingly and be in the system. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. Likewise. Thanks, Dave. Any other questions from folks? All right. Happy holidays, everyone. Good to see you all. Take Stay care. safe. Thanks, everyone.